Big Screen Science was a project which gave secondary school students around the UK an opportunity to explore the moral and ethical issues of biomedical science through filmmaking. The film which follows looks at some of the issues surrounding xenotransplantation. The story revolves around the question as to whether the main character, Susie, should accept a heart from a pig. We'll be hearing from a group of Year 10 students from Abraham Moss School in Manchester about their involvement in the project, and this will be followed by the complete 10-minute film that they made. I chose xenotransplantation because it was the best and the most interesting. Not many people think of this topic. You yeah, didn't even know where it was at the beginning. We're talking xenotransplantation. The, transplantation the inspiration from the film came from the Jerry Springer show, and the students wanted to use this format to demonstrate the heated debate that can often surround this area. Welcome to the Perry Pigger Show. We talked to scientists, we went on the internet to find out what it is. We got books to find out more about, and then we went to a script writer to see how do you put it in, because it's really big and we had like 10 minutes. Actually, on the very first meeting, I took a script editor along, and she took their ideas and gave it more form and a narrative, and talked to them about character development and how it was Susie who was really the central character because it was her choice. Meet Susie. She's nine years old and got her a whole life ahead of her. Or has she? We chose animation because it was a serious matter. We wanted people to watch it. Imagine the heart is the engine of a car. What we realised is we could illustrate points, like if you wanted to get inside someone's body and show um, you know, how a heart was working or how you change the heart around, it's easier to do that with animation than it is with live action. In an animation, pigs can talk. And if we did a documentary and we had pigs, it would be disgusting and it would be boring and no one would, watch it, no one would want to watch it. Welcome and what a swine of a show we've got for you today. We've got a, um, a breakdown of what the, the kids wanted to do, which was a, the Perry Picker show. We worked out what kind of animation we'd be able to do it in and get it finished. We were designing loads of different characters. We wanted some characters that were old and some characters that were young because we wanted different opinions. We had some characters that were Asian and some that were Christian, so we had like different religions. Perry Pig, for example, he was he's like old and we gave him grey hair for that, but we also made him wear a suit to make him look formal and posh. We took the designs, uh, some of them were scanned in, used the outlines um, in the computer and, quite, uh, and uh, built models based on those outlines. Pigs are dirty creatures, it's just too gross, it shouldn't be allowed. You ignoramus, how dare you? Now it's over to our lovely viewers at home to decide, what should Susie do? We were considering different issues like religious issues. I was looking at what I felt and what my religion felt at the same time. So it was a bit confusing and I'm still really not sure if I'd actually take a pig's heart. What is the magnesium powder going to be able to do to the copper oxide? Some people have different ways of learning. Some can just read and learn, but some people need to see things, and it's easier to learn if you see something. I'm more interested in science now than I was before. It was a lot of fun, and also we have learned a lot as well. Well, I was in plantation. I loved it. I thought it was a really good experience because I've never done nothing like this before. I have found science to be more interesting. Doing all the drama and all that was more fun than opening a textbook and copying out. Welcome, welcome, and what a swine of a show we've got for you today! Perry, Perry, Perry. <laughs> Meet Susie! She's nine years old and got her a whole life ahead of her. Or has she? Tell us your story, Susie. A few months ago, I found out I need a heart transplant. So tell these lovely folks what's wrong with the heart you've got. It's called cardiomyopathy. Cardiomyopathy, isn't it, sweetie? Yeah. That's what I said. It means my heart muscle is getting weaker as I get older. And eventually, it won't be able to pump the blood around my body. Oh. What will happen then, Susie? The doctor said I'm going to 
Dad, I don't get a new heart. And Susie isn't the only one waiting for a transplant to save her life. We've uncovered a few facts that might surprise you. In the UK, 6,000 people are waiting for an organ transplant. But while 2,850 life-giving transplants took place last year, tragically, 443 people died while waiting due to the critical shortage of donors. Watching things like that makes me feel so sad. <laughs> but don't despair, Susie, because here at the Perry Pigger Show, we found someone who could help. Let's meet him. Yes, that's right, folks. We're talking xenotransplantation. The transplantation of interspecies organs. That's disgusting. Get him out of here. Now, don't be pig-headed. Let's hear what he's got to say for himself. Welcome to the Perry Pigger Show, Roger. Thanks, Perry. I'm happy to be here. Well, Roger, I think you can tell from our audience reaction they weren't expecting a pig. So, tell us why you're here. Well, Perry, it's this or a bacon batty. Most pigs live a really uncomfortable life, at least this way. I'm being looked after and I'm doing my bit for humanity. You want your brains tested, you do. Well, Susie, would you accept a heart transplant from Roger here? Um, I'm not sure. Let's see what our audience thinks. Yeah. Pigs are dirty creatures. It's just too gross. It shouldn't be allowed. You ignoramus. How dare you? I'd never accept a pig's heart, even if I had to die. That's easy for you to say. You don't have to make the decision for yourself. I have to go to the hospital every week for kidney dialysis. That's where you get your kidney cleaned out so it works for a bit longer, right? Right, Perry. It's keeping me alive while I'm waiting for a donor. I have two kids and a pregnant wife, and I'm scared my kids are going to lose their dad. I take a pig's kidney even if I had one more day with my kids. Thanks for sharing that. What I want to know is why there aren't enough human organs that are suitable. Humans are just too selfish. They never give anything all they're interested in is getting. I think we should focus on the animals instead of just thinking about what humans need. Is it right to breed pigs just for human consumption? We breed them for eating. Would you eat your pets, mister? That's different. How's it different, exactly? Well, ladies and gentlemen, pigs and pigesses, let's hear from our next guest. He joins us live from his lab in Swinton, Dr. Stephen Porkins, can you hear us? Loud and clear, Perry. <clears throat> Loud and clear. So, Dr. Porkins, tell us more. Okay, Perry. Let's take you back and show you how we got to this point. Okay. Imagine the heart is the engine of a car. A car has pistons and spark plugs to help make it work. The heart has valves that lets the blood flow around it. Uh-huh. Sometimes pistons and spark plugs become clogged with oil and grease and need replacing, or they were damaged to start with. Sometimes valves become clogged with cholesterol and fatty foods and need replacing, or they were damaged to start with. Sure. So, just like a mechanic will change a spark plug in a car, we will change the valve in a heart. Thank you, Hilda. You're welcome. Now this is a heart valve from a pig. We found that these valves would fit into human hearts. With this little thing, we can save thousands of lives every year. Pop it in, and off the patient trots for another 10,000 miles. Smashing. Sounds great. It is, until you hit 10,000 miles, then you have to lift the bonnet again. People don't have bonnets. Exactly. The body's not a car. You can't just lift the bonnet every few months and change a valve when you feel like it. What we wanted to do is change the whole engine. Give them a pig engine, as it were. Extraordinary. A pig engine in a human chassis. Why a pig, though? Why not something closer to a human, like an ape? Two reasons, Perry. But I'm not sure you're going to be happy with either of them. First of all, pigs are cheap. I'm sure some are, but I think you'll find this suit is ham -orny. No, 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 not like that. I mean, there are lots of them, living locally, on farms, waiting to be sold. Your average ape lives miles away. The cost of airfare alone is crippling. Okay, I wouldn't mind the air miles, but point taken. And number two? People are less sentimental about pigs. I'm very highly regarded in the human community. I'm sure you are, but I never heard of a boar's buffet. 
a chimpanzee's tea party, on the other hand. <laughs> Very funny. The little costumes and the way they hold their cups. Oh, Hilda loves nothing more. When they do a forward roll. Across the table. And the food goes everywhere. I could do a forward roll. <laughs> but no one would want to watch. Oops. Anyway, pigs' organs are the same size as humans. So it all makes sense. I'm sure there are risks, though, Doctor, using such a cheap heart. There are risks from all hearts, Perry. Probably the biggest problem is rejection. I think we've all suffered from that. The body is armed with an immune system. It stops foreign bodies invading and harming it. When it sees a pig's heart, it goes into not-self-so-destroy mode and tries to kick it out. <laughs> The pig's heart is more likely to be rejected than a human's. Or an ape's. A way around this is to genetically engineer pigs with human characteristics. Or an ape's. Another problem is infectious disease. In order for the body to accept the pig's heart, the immune system has to be disabled. It won't reject the heart, but it won't fight diseases either. Sounds scary. It is. Think of the diseases that have passed from animals to humans. Foot and mouth from cows, flu from birds, and HIV from monkeys. Aha! Uh so they're not so perfect after all. I'm, I mean a chicken with a cold. Are you sure? Do they have chicken hankies? I suppose they must have invented chicken soup. We think we can stop this by taking piglets from their mothers at two weeks old. We can raise them in a germ-free environment. Opinion is divided. We still don't know enough. So, in conclusion, the potential for saving the lives of people like Susie here is huge. But the risks are significant. Dr. Stephen Porkins, thank you. Thank you. So what does our audience think now? This kind of genetic engineering is illegal in humans. It's not right to use pigs' organ farms split up from their mothers and raised on their own. But there's an organ shortage. People die. We have to do something. Okay, there are downsides. But some of the patients waiting for the transplant would probably take the risk, like this gentleman here. If they're okay with it, why should we stop him? What if there was a law that said everyone was an organ donor, unless they carried the card saying they didn't want to be? Ew! I wouldn't want to be carved up like a piece of meat when I die. Would you still love me if I had a pig's heart? Eh, uh, I'd have to think about it. Perry, I have an announcement I'd like to make on your show. Okay, sweetie, but make it snappy. I like to see to this man here, my boyfriend, your dog. A little lovers too. Let's leave them to it, shall we? And one more thing, Susie, honey. You have got lots of family and friends who love you very much. They'll stick by you no matter what you decide. Thank you. Any final comments from our audience? Don't take the dirty pig's heart. Take it. Take it. Enjoy each day of your life, Susie. But now it's over to our lovely viewers at home to decide. What should Susie do? Should she wait for a human heart and chance dying while she waits? Or should she take a pig heart at the risk of a life-threatening disease or virus? You can register your vote online on www.terrypiggershow.com and help Susie decide what to do.